Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tide Lab. Today, I think it'll be fun if we reverse dye a dress. The dress has been pre-washed and it's just barely damp. I have the dress turned inside out, so the area that you see that is a different color, that's the inside seams of the dress. I got this dress at Walmart and it's one of the 100% cotton dresses that has the different layers to it and it kind of flares out. They're really cute dresses that you see all during the summer. Has a little capped sleeve. I thought I would give it a try and see how well these will reverse dye. Because of the different layers and because the layers are kind of gathered, I wasn't exactly sure what design to do with this. So I just started down at one corner and kind of gathered up the fabric going diagonally across the dress. Not all the way up to the top part of the dress, but just part way up the dress. What I'm going to do is put some diagonal stripes on the dress, but I don't want them to be perfect stripes. So I don't really want to have to fan fold and draw the lines. Because of the ruffles on the dress, if I tried to make all of the fan folds perfect, any small imperfection is going to stand out. And I don't want that. So I figured it would be easier to just go ahead and do something a little more random than that way if the lines aren't exactly perfect because of the ruffles and the different tiers or layers on the dress, it wouldn't stand out as much. I'm going to tie this area with sinew and I'm using sinew so that I have the black lines underneath where I tie the sinew. The wax coating from the sinew isn't going to allow my color remover underneath that area to take out the color from that spot. I'm going to use Out White Bright to remove the color from this dress. And if you've ever used that product before, it will remove the color very quickly. And if you don't have your sinew lines tied really tight, it's going to take out pretty much all the color from whatever you're removing the color from. On either side of the initial line, I'm going to continue tying sinew lines. And I'm going to vary the distance between the lines. Here again, I want to make sure that it doesn't look like I tried to make it perfect. I'm going to put in quite a few lines because I want quite a bit of black left in my dress.
Like I mentioned earlier, I'm using a product called Out White Bright to remove the color. And I purchase Out White Bright in the laundry aisle at Walmart. It's usually by the bleach. It's not bleach, and so it won't damage the fabric like bleach will, and it doesn't need to be neutralized. So it's a great product to use for color removal. If you can't find any at your store, I have a link down below in the description for this video for where to purchase some from Amazon. I'm going to use this product outside because it does have a smell and so I've used it in the garage before, but I don't like to have that smell inside. I'm also going to wear my respirator for the entire process because it is a powder and I don't want to inhale any of the powder or the fumes from the Out White Bright. You got to protect your lungs. I'm also removing the color from several other items at the same time. So I've placed all of them down inside of a plastic tote or container. And I'm starting by adding some Out White Bright to the top of the shirts and the dresses that are in this container. Then I'm going to pour boiling hot water over the top and as you notice the out white bright starts to work immediately. It starts to bubble and it starts to remove the color. I haven't sped this part of the video up so this is really how fast it works. Okay I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up but I went ahead and left the dress in the out white bright for about 15 to 20 minutes before I took the dress and all the other items in this container to my utility sink and I rinsed them really well in cold water. I left them tied through this entire process and I put them into my washing machine and I washed them on either a hot or a warm water cycle, it doesn't really matter, using a little bit of textile detergent. Washing the shirts is going to help get some of the smell from the out white bright out of the fabric. Then after the items came out of the washing machine, I put them into a soda ash solution and I allowed them to soak for about 20 to 30 minutes. I wrung them out of my panda spin dryer and then I put the dress aside and allowed it to dry out completely. It's pretty thick and so I wanted to make sure it was completely dry in the middle so that I would get good color saturation when I ice dye it. Okay, so this is the color that it turned after the whole entire color removal process. By the way, the sinew held up really well too. You can see there's just one little bitty piece sticking out at the very end. And that's a good thing. I need that so that I can unwrap it later. So I thought that some really bright teal and purple colors would look cool with the black lines. I've chosen a whole lot of colors. So I'll list them down below in the description for this video and then I'll give them to you in just a few minutes. Before I start applying the dye though, I'm going to make myself an ice barrier to go around the dress. I'm going to rack dye this dress, which basically just means that I'm going to place it on a rack so that it allows the melting ice and the dye to run through the dress. So for the ice barrier, I'm using some silicone cake molds. And I purchased these at Amazon and I have a link down below in the description for this video for where I purchased them. Because this dress is so long, I'm going to kind of twist it like a cinnamon roll. But I'm going to use the silicone cake molds to keep it separated. I'm using wooden clothespins, which I'm attaching to the metal rack, to hold this whole entire thing in place. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm going to lightly spray the entire top of this dress with a little bit of soda ash solution which I placed inside of a spray bottle. 
That will help keep the dye where I put it so that a whole lot of it doesn't fall off into the bottom of my container. I already added a little bit of aquamarine from Pro Chemical and Dye down at the very end section. But from there, I'm going to add Royal Purple from Dye Spin, Caribbean Blue from Dharma, Orchid from Dharma, Island Breeze from Pro Chemical, True Violet from Grateful Dyes, Jade Green from Dharma, Royal Purple from Grateful Dyes, Glacier Blue from Dharma, Hydrangea, Parakeet, both from Dharma, Plum from Pro Chemical, Deep Ocean from Dye Spin, True Purple from Grateful Dyes, Mermaid's Dream from Dharma, Plum Blossom and Robin's Egg Blue, both from Dharma, Purple 521 from Custom Colors, Aquamarine from Dharma, Lavender Fields from Dye Spin, Bahama Blue from Dharma, and English Violet from Dye Spin. It's a whole lot of colors, but there's a whole lot of sections on this dress. I think I had to repeat a few colors at the very end, but not very many. So what I basically am trying to do is do an aqua or a teal color followed by a purple color. I think that purple and teal is a really pretty color combination and I think mixed with the black lines from the dress, it's gonna look really cool. Spoiler alert, I think it looks awesome. One of the advantages of putting this rack inside of a little bit smaller container is I can spin the container to put the dye colors on top of the dress. And that was really convenient. Once I have all the dye colors on the dress, I'm going to add a little bit of additional soda ash over the top and then a layer of ice. I didn't have enough space to add a very thick layer of ice on top of the dress. So after the first layer of ice melted, I came back and added a second layer of ice. I checked the back of the dress and the colors were coming through pretty well, but I went ahead and added a third layer of ice. And then I went ahead and put the dress outside to process for a while. It's been really hot here recently, so I think that day was probably about 108 degrees. And tie-dye really likes the heat. You don't want to let it dry out though, so I want to keep it out of the direct sun. To help with that, I just laid a container lid on top of the silicone cake molds and that helped keep the sun off of the dress. I let the dress process for probably about 24 hours after the last layer of ice melted. It was outside for about 12 of those hours. Okay, so to rinse the dress, I took it to my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. 
Honestly, one of the hardest things this time of year is actually getting cold water. My utility sink is out in the garage, and so a lot of times when I turn on the cold water, it feels pretty warm coming out of the tap. So I eventually warmed the water up to really hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Then I untied the dress and continued rinsing it until the water was running almost clear. I think I ended up going ahead and soaking this one and to do that, I just placed some really hot water in my utility sink, added a little splash of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water and allowed the dress to soak. I changed out the water when it would cool off, which it didn't really hardly ever cool off, but when it would get really dark, I would change out the water and I continued doing that until the water was almost clear. Then I put it into my washing machine along with some of Dharma's textile detergent and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after I washed and dried the dress, this is what it looks like. Okay, so I took pictures a couple of different ways of this dress. This one is where I laid it out flat and I took photographs of it. And then I also put it on a mannequin. I think that these colors are showing a little bit darker than it really is. The colors when I placed it on the mannequin are more accurate. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at the dress that it's a little bit darker in these photographs than it really is. But I think it's gorgeous. It is such a pretty dress. I am so glad that I went with this design versus trying to make each one of those lines perfect or putting a real structured design with this dress. Because of the different tiers and the layers of this dress, I think something more random and freeform just works really well. And I really love all the colors in the dress. I think alternating between the more teal and turquoise colors and the purple works really well with the black lines. For the most part, I got really good color saturation. There were a couple of colors that didn't show up quite as much and I think one of those is like plum blossom. I think that may be like the pink right there in the middle that seems a little blotchy. Also robin's egg blue, which is right next to it. That's a pretty faint color and so it didn't show up a whole lot either. But you know what? The color that the dress turned after it was reverse dyed is not a bad color. That kind of taupey color, it works really well with the purple and the teal colors. So a little bit of that showing doesn't bother me. Normally I don't like to have a whole lot of white showing on a shirt, but when I do reverse dyes, I really don't mind that taupe color kind of coming through. But I think it just looks really pretty. I think it would look really cute with just a pair of wedges or even some flat sandals. So I love this dress. I think it turned out looking really pretty and I'm really happy with it. Why don't you guys drop me some comments down below and let me know what you think about it. And if you've enjoyed watching the video of how to make it, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.